when India took over the uh, presidency of uh, G20 in Indonesia at Bali, we were in the midst of a scenario of uh, slowing growth and productivity worldwide. There was a huge impact of COVID-19 pandemic, which had led to vast segments of the global population going below the poverty line. Vast number of people had lost their jobs. There was a cost of living debt crisis. There had been a reversal on the sustainable development goals. There was a challenge of climate crisis and climate action. At that point, India felt that we should start our presidency with the theme of Vasudev Kutumbakam. That is, the world is one family. We are one earth, one family, and we should have one future. And the Prime Minister, who is the leader of G20 from India, and I act as his Sherpa, he said that our presidency, India's presidency, should actually be inclusive, it should be ambitious, it should be decisive, and it should be action-oriented. And these are the four principles on which we have worked. And I can assure you that we have lived up to his vision of being inclusive, ambitious, action-oriented, and very, very decisive during our presidency. During this presidency, we had some broad priorities with which we started. And these priorities were very critical for the global world. First of which, that at a point of time when the one-third of the world is facing a recession, we should drive bold, sustainable, strong, and inclusive growth. The second key priority for us was to have accelerated sustainable development goal, goals because only 12 of the 169 SDG, SDGs are on track and we are way behind the schedule. We are midway at the 2030 action point, but we, we are way behind and therefore accelerating SDGs improving learning outcomes, health outcomes, nutrition, all these were very critical for India's presidency. Thirdly, we wanted the world to take the lead on green development in the context of climate action and climate finance. And there were several components of this which we wanted to drive. And therefore, Green development, climate action, climate finance was our third priority. And because both SDGs and climate action require finance, particularly for developing and, develop, de developing and emerging markets in the global south, it was critical that we focus on multilateral institutions of the 21st century, how to redesign and reform them. And our view was that Global South, developing countries, emerging markets, which has been a very, very key component of India's presidency, must be able to get long-term financing and must be able to use new instruments for financing to drive both SDG and climate finance. So the fifth priority of India's presidency was that we must have technological development and digital public infrastructure. Because if we have to lift vast segments of the population, if we have to make a difference to the global south, technology will be the key driver. And 
most of the innovations in the world have come from the big tech in the west and even in china they've come from big tech but india has created a very unique model of digital public infrastructure which is open source open api is interoperable and has enabled digital identity for every citizen has enabled bank account for every citizens has enabled everyone to do fast payments has enabled everyone to improve learning outcomes and health outcomes and during the covid we were able to do 2.2 billion covid vaccinations and therefore technological development and how to use digital public infrastructure to drive growth when 4 billion people of the world do not have digital identity about 3 billion people do not have bank accounts and over 133 countries do not have fast payments that was critical from from india's priorities perspective and the last key priority which the prime minister elucidated and which he felt very strongly about was women led development to bring women led development to bring women empowerment and gender equality so these have been the six key priorities of india on which we have worked we had started our presidency by on which the foreign secretary will talk about with a meeting of the voice of the global south we got the perspective of 125 leaders and then we remained focused on the perspective of the global south and the requirements of the developing countries and the new delhi leaders declaration which many of you will see post the summit you will see it as a voice of the global south and the developing countries no document in the world would have such a strong voice for the global south and the developing countries as the new delhi leaders declaration and therefore the prime minister's vision of india's g20 presidency being a very inclusive presidency uh, has been our aim there has been a huge scale and reach of india's presidency there have been 19 g20 countries and eu's and the eu that means 20 nine special invitee countries there have been three regional organizations there have been 11 international organizations who participated in all the 220 meetings that took place in india we were able to use this opportunity to take the meeting to over 60 cities of india and every state and every union territory of india and use this opportunity to demonstrate the liveliness the vibrancy and the dynamism of india's federal polity every state vigorously participated and we were able to trans translate and bring a huge transformation to the city infrastructure and city 60 cities when g20s are held across other countries they are held in the capital or maximum two cities in india's case we've held them over 60 cities of india and used this as an opportunity to transform them so ladies and gentlemen we've had over a vast the biggest participation in g20 from across the world we have had africa's highest ever participation in addition to the 29 countries we have had 32 additional countries we've had we've been the voice of the global south we've done a huge number of indian uh during this period we've used this opportunity also to push a huge amount of indian narrative through one district one product that is every district which has come out with a product focused that was the only gift we gave to all the visitors who came to, during our presidency so that we could have an impact on the lives of our artisans we have focused on millets which is critical from the viewpoint of sustainability of agriculture we have focused on 
achievements of India as a mother of democracy, as focused on the digital transformation and digital public infrastructure. Uh, uh, so with these few words, ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you that our presidency has been inclusive, decisive, and action-oriented. Uh, our New Delhi leader's declaration is almost ready. I would not like to dwell on it because this declaration will be recommended to the leaders and the leaders will then accept it. And only after it has been accepted by the leaders, uh, I will be able, we'll be able to talk about the actual achievements of this uh, declaration. With these few words, I'll conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. May I now hand over the floor to Shri Ajay Seth, uh, Finance Deputy, sir. Good afternoon to all. Let me share some of the priorities which the finance-related work handled during the course of the presidency. Under the leadership of our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, the focus and the vision of India G20 presidency has been to bring focus to the global discourse, to issues which make a difference to people's lives, lead to actionable, decidable, sustainable and inclusive growth, and empower the global growth. Keeping that vision in mind, the priorities which were set and endorsed by finance ministers and governors in February in their first meeting in Bangalore, some of them were how to strengthen multilateral development banks for challenges of 21st century. Similar manner, how to support a strong, sustainable, balanced and inclusive growth in the midst of the current challenges which the world is facing. In the same way, how to manage the debt vulnerabilities which several countries are facing. Yet another priority was that how the technology can be used for financial inclusion, for productivity gains, for efficiency, for private sector. Similarly, how the new potentials of technology such as blockchain or crypto can be beneficial and yet how to build a policy discourse, the policy approaches and what set of regulation building consensus around that. So these were some of the priorities and during the course of the year in more than 25 meetings of various working groups, ministers, deputies, these have been deliberated with very intense efforts. And one unique feature of the work has been, I'll put it rather, two big elements, two big differences. One was to go beyond the structured meetings and arrange almost 40 seminars, side events, symposiums, inviting domestic as well as global experts and generating a very intense discussion to find a robust way forward. In a similar way, how to generate the local connect, Jan Bhagidari. Almost 40 events were done on issues which are relevant to people's lives. Based on these deliberations over the course of the year, these recommendations have now been placed for consideration of the leaders. They would be discussing it over the course of next two days and then we will have definite outcomes and we will all share with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. May I request uh, Shri Harshwadhan Shringla, Chief Coordinator, sir. Namaskar and uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> the focus of today's uh, press conference is on the G20 New Delhi Summit. 
But since many of our media friends have joined us only today, I'll briefly begin by taking you through our presidency journey. As you know, we assumed the presidency of the G20 on the 1st of December last year, and we will conclude our presidency on the 30th of November this year. During the course of our presidency, we would have hosted over 220 G20 meetings in 60 different cities across the length and breadth of our country. In keeping with the Prime Minister's vision of a pan-Indian G20, we, have, we will have hosted one G20 meeting in at least one G20 meeting in every state and union territory of India. And from, to my mind, that is the finest example of cooperative federalism that we can see. Now, the effort has been, of course, to take the G20 down to the grassroots level through a process that we call Jan Bhagedari, which is a people's participation movement. And whether it is through the G20 University Connect or the G20 Model School or quiz, essay and painting competitions and festivals, the G20 has been popularized and taken down to the grassroots levels in our country. We have also looked at the G20 as an opportunity to highlight and showcase India's rich cultural heritage and diversity and our tourism potential. And in that context, we have hosted over 300 cultural events with the participation of over 18,000 of, of our cultural artists and exponents. Of course, uh, we have also made our presidency an inclusive one. Sherpa has already mentioned that we've had very significant participation from the Global South and from Africa. Uh, we would have received a total of about 100,000 visitors for our G20 presidency from over 125 nationalities. And for many of them, this has been the discovery of a new India. And I think that has been very significant from their point of view. Uh, clearly, the G20 presidency will bring economic benefits to our country and to our citizens, and that's also been a very important objective. Now, when you organize such a huge exercise, uh, an unprecedented and uniquely Indian presidency, uh, you do need an organizational base. And we have started on this, on the organization and planning of the G20 as early as the beginning of last year, one and a half years before today's uh, eve of the summit. Uh, we have set up the G20 Secretariat. Uh, in this process, it has been a whole of government approach and a whole of nation approach. And every single Indian citizen has been involved in that effort. And it's very important to note that about, a f about 15 million of our citizens have been directly involved in the participation of some G20 event or the other across our country. So in that organizational endeavor, we've had guidance from the Prime Minister himself, from Cabinet Ministers. There is a coordination committee which has been set up under the Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister, which includes the NSA, which includes Cabinet Secretary, Senior Secretaries, Sherpa and all of us here. And this committee has been meeting regularly. It's met uh, at least nine times formally, but many times informally, and has provided extensive guidance on every aspect and over overseen every aspect of the presidency's organization and management. So I think that was important. Now, on the summit itself, of course, uh, Foreign Secretary and Sherpa will take you through the program elements, but it's important for you to know what else is there and what are the activities and exhibitions and other events which are within the Bharat Mandapam, within the G20 uh, summit complex. Of course, uh, the media center is one that you have seen. Both halls four and five have been uh, earmarked for the media center. Uh, we expect to host between two and 3,000 international and domestic media here. Uh, it will be a state-of-the-art media center with over 1,300 workstations, high-speed internet, and uh, additional secretary XP would have communicated to you the other aspects of this media center. There is an emphasis on uh, the cultural aspects of our presidency as well. Uh, there is a, a very unique exhibition uh, which is called the Cultural Corridor, which will be uh, on display at the uh, convention center. Uh, this uh, involves the display of uh, cultural artifacts and objects from different countries, both uh, tangible and intangible heritage, but also natural heritage. Uh, so this has some very, very interesting uh, exhibits, which uh, the details of which will be available with you. Um, we also have an immersive display, which has, again, uh, some of the best illustrations of every country that is a part of our G20 presidency. 
and uh, all of this again is at the convention center there's a democracy cube which is also there and uh, what we will certainly do is that we'll make this available uh, we'll make this open to the media and the public after we finish uh, the immediate summit uh, and this would be a very interesting exhibition to see besides that we have the mother of democracy exhibition uh, india is the largest democracy vibrant democracy over the ages has arranged uh, an exhibition which would be uh, essentially narrating the 7000 year tradition of democracy in our country from the ancient to the modern uh, there will be 26 interactive panels uh, which would be available in uh, all of the g20 languages there are apparently 16 languages in which this will be available uh, there is also uh, a bronze replica of a girl from the sindhu saraswati era uh, you know 2500 to 3500 years before and this uh, is a very unique uh, part of the exhibition at the center of the exhibition and there will also be uh, someone who will greet everybody it's, it's artificial intelligence driven so it's a technology oriented uh, uh, um, platform and and of course uh, the person who will greet will also provide an introduction to india's age old democratic democratic traditions in their respective languages you uh, are also aware that we will have at the time of the of the dinner that will be hosted tomorrow by our president uh, there will be uh, a musical ensemble which will play in the back background. Uh, this, of course, will represent, again, musicians from all, uh, all parts of our country, but it will also include musical traditions of every nature, whether it's Hindustani, Carnatic, folk, um, bhajans, every aspect of music in our country will be covered by these 77 musicians who would also include young students, um, uh, people who um, have uh, some disabilities, but also people who are uh, from different walks of life across our country. They will also be displaying some very rare instruments, musical instruments, which are hardly ever seen or played in our country, but this is something that is an opportunity for us to see so many rare instruments coming together in this particular area. Now, uh, there will be a strong emphasis on technology, uh, especially technology that is uh, linked to public uh, uh, digital public infrastructure and in that context uh, we will have a few exhibitions at the media center if you enter the foyer of the media center you will see uh, a display by our uh, ministry of information technology which is basically a digital india experience zone which will have the display of all of the mobile apps and the platforms under which we have arranged to deliver development uh, to uh, the grassroots levels in india right from aadhaar to upi and this entire India stack will be available. And if any of you do fall sick or have any medical issues, please ensure that you go and connect with eSanjeevani, a digital platform that will have a doctor advise you immediately on the spot. Similarly, we have a Reserve Bank of India Innovation Hub, which is again in the media center. And uh, this Innovation Hub will display technologies that FinTech, which has uh, not yet been introduced to the public domain, these are still in the, in, in the pilot stages, uh, one of them is the central bank digital currency through which even international media who are here who don't have bank accounts in India will be able to get some money in their mobile wallets and will be able to use that digitally to buy products in our crafts mela, which will be in the adjoining hall, hall number three. And this crafts mela will also, each stall of the crafts mela, which represents a different state or union territory of India, displaying, as Sherpa mentioned, the ODOP products and geographical indicator products, will have a QR code compatible with your mobile wallet, the digital currency, and with the UPI. Uh, we will also have a frictionless credit uh, uh, display, which basically, again, is a cutting-edge technology under which any credit to be given, say, to our farmers, uh, the information relating to that would be immediately available on your mobile phone or your iPad, from the land records to your Aadhaar to your previous uh, credit uh, history. And this will enable credit to be given within a few minutes of time with each uh, of the farmers. And uh, so from that point of view, I think we also have, I hope all of you have downloaded our digital app, the G20 India digital app, which is again a state-of-the-art app, which enables you to, to uh, get this in any language in the G20. Uh, you can get it in Portuguese, in German, in Japanese. And this will also enable you to talk to anybody who doesn't understand your language, say from Hindi to Japanese or from Portuguese to, to German. Uh, it will be instant conversation through the app. You can navigate from one part of the Bharat Mandapam to any other part of this, build, of this complex. It will enable you to get there without a problem. And any information that you may need on our presidency, on the G20, on India, 
UPI, any aspects of this is available. And of course, if you feel like a yoga break, that's also there on our app. So I'll stop here. I'm sure there are many other things, but we will stop. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. May I hand over to Foreign Secretary uh, Shivanay Kwatra. Thank you very much and good afternoon to friends from the media, both domestic and international. I have six brief points to make. Besides what has already been shared by my colleagues, senior colleagues, Sherpas, Chief Coordinator and Secretary Department of Economic Affairs. Point number first. <clears throat> if you really want to get a sense and a sense of India's vision, priorities and approach to the G20 presidency, uh, I, would all, I would encourage all of you to read the op-ed that the Honorable Prime Minister of India has written yesterday. It captures, it distilled a sense of how India envisions and looks at the ongoing G20 presidency of India. Two, the coming together of the 41 heads of delegations, heads of state, government, heads of international organization in India starting yesterday is under Prime Minister's personal leadership in direction. It is essentially a celebration of the coming together of the G20 family. And as uh, our Shepa mentioned earlier, it's the largest ever participation of the Global South in India. Three, whether it concerns India's national priorities with regard to G20 or the priorities of G20 countries as a collective, as also the concerns and interests of the Global South, the specifics of the agenda which the Sherpa and the Department of Economic Affairs Secretary mentioned, they have been structured in a most inclusive and the harmonious concepts of one earth, one family, one future. Fourth, very briefly with regard to the program of the G20 summit, the summit official conference program is structured around two sessions. First one, one earth starting tomorrow morning, one family tomorrow afternoon, and one future in the morning of the 10th. Besides three sessions of the conference, there would also be a couple of sideline events which are currently being structured involving India and other heads of the state who are visiting us here. Third, a dinner by the Honorable President of India tomorrow. Fourth, uh, a, a visit to the Rajghat uh, to pay homage to Mahatma Gandhi and fifth, a spouses program. Uh, these would be the broad five elements of the summit. And the last fifth point which I wanted to make, Honorable Prime Minister of India will also be hosting several sideline bilateral meetings during the course of this G20 summit with the visiting heads of state governments and the other leaders who are in, going to be in Delhi, as I said, starting yesterday till their departure over 10th and 11th. I would stop here and see if we have any questions on this. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Um, may I lay the ground rules before I open the... Please sit down. Thank you. Uh, please introduce yourselves and the organization you represent. We will take, uh, you know, take questions in a group because we don't have time. Let me start with Manish here, TV9. Microphones will come to you. Please wait. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, first of all, um, please introduce, introduce yourself and the organization. This is Manish Jha from TV9. Uh, Amitabh Ji, Foreign Secretary and Chief Coordinator. Uh, I must tell you, first of all, that uh, arrangement at uh, International Media Center are really excellent. I have attended four summits before, before this summit, and I can tell very proudly that uh, these arrangements are you know, really best. So, thank you so much. So, my question I would like to ask in Hindi. Uh, Amitabh Ji, Lagatar, Aap Log Joint Declaration Ko Lekar Lage Hoye Thay, Bhoat Mehnat Kar Rahe Thay, Aapne Hint Bhi Kiya Hai Ki Joint Declaration Aayega Aur Bhoat Alag Tarikhe Se Bhoat Khas Hooga. Lekin Khabre Ye Bhi Aarai Thi Ki Chin Ki Tarap Se Har Meeting Me 
ज्वाइंट डेक्लेरेशन में कोई कंसेंसस न हो इसके लिए कोशिश की जा रही थी कभी वसुधैव कुटुम्बकम के नाम पर कभी किसी और की लैंग्वेज जो है संस्कृत में क्यों है तो किस तरह ये जर्नी रही अगर आप इसको शेयर कर सके क्योंकि हर जर्नलिस्ट यही पूछ रहा है ज्वाइंट डेक्लेरेशन आएगा या नहीं आएगा अगर आएगा तो कैसे आएगा दिस इज येशी सेली फ्रॉम द न्यू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस आई लाइक टू नो येशी सेली फ्रॉम द न्यू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस आई लाइक टू नो हु इज रेप्रेजेंटिंग एफ्रीकन यूनियन इज इट वैकी सॉल फॉर द जी ट्वेंटी एंड इज द जी ट्वेंटी ऑफिशियली नॉट ऑडिबल कुड यूर पीट कैन कैन यू हेयर मी नाउ Uh, so this is Yeshi Seli from the New Indian Express. I'd like to know who is uh, uh, representing the African Union uh, for the summit, and is the G20 officially going to be called G21 after the conclusion of the summit? Okay, Sadhant. Hi, sir. I'm Sidhan from Vion. My question is: uh, Do you think the absence of the Chinese president uh, impacts the summit's proceeding? is it an attempt by the chinese to undermine do you see it in that way as well the lady in yellow behind samira hussein with the bbc i'm wondering if you think that the that ukraine will derail talks and the ability to come up with a joint statement um the, i i'll repeat the question none of you have pretty audible say will ukraine derail the talks is and the ability to come up with a joint declaration that's what i heard Will Ukraine derail yeah. the talks? Yeah, I'll take one more question here. Yeah, right here. Nenima, yeah. Uh, this is Nenima Basu from ABP Live. Um, just one question on the Russia-Ukraine war. Will there be a specific discussion on the Black Grain Initiative? Thank you so much. So, will can I pass on these five questions, perhaps? Uh, uh, so, let me first say that. Uh, on the journey of uh, the joint declaration uh, i would prefer to speak after the summit is over because the journey has just started it's not ended so i think you should have uh, a little bit of patience uh, we'll give you a complete glimpse of what the journey has been after the summit gets over because uh, you know this is a leader summit i am only the sherpa of my leader who is the prime minister of india so the recommendations of the sherpas are made to their respective leaders the leaders have to accept those recommendations and approve them once they are approved then that will get into public domain and we'll be able to talk about it some of the other questions also related to the content of the leaders declaration and i would request all of you to realize the high nature of confidentiality of the leaders declaration because it has to be placed before the leaders and they have to approve it but after that we'll be very we will be very happy to explain elucidate and take you into the into uh, all the details of that leaders declaration uh, as far as au is concerned let me say that the prime minister uh, who's a great believer in global south had uh, written to all the leaders to uh, and there has been a very positive response but formally uh, that will come before the summit uh, thirdly on the chinese i would merely like to say that uh, china is a multilateral player in multilateral discussions the issues are very different from bilateral issues and uh, chinese discuss issues of growth development Uh, from their perspective the challenge about any multilateral discussion is that you have to bring consensus across every issue every country has a veto power and therefore we have to bring everybody on board and i must say that we have been able to work with every single country every single country and bring them on board which you will later see uh, there was an issue about russia ukraine uh, conflict let me say that g20 is an economic forum it discusses issues of growth and development uh however last year in bali uh, there was a feeling that issues of conflict and war have an impact on growth and development 
So food, fuel and fertilizer get impacted and therefore that issue was discussed and uh, this year also uh, as a consequence of the challenge of growth and development and implementation of SDG that issue has been discussed at great length and uh, we will talk about it once the leaders summit is over because whatever we discuss will have to be first discussed by the leaders and they will have to take a formal decision on that and then after that has been decided I'll be free to speak to you at great length on this issue. Foreign Secretary sir, would you like to say anything on these issues? Nothing much to add except to the questions which uh, was asked with regard to the presence or absence of leaders. I think External Affairs of Ministers of India has already spoken on that issue and I think that statement stands for itself. Thank you. I'll open the floor for the next round of questions. I saw a hand here. Yeah, please. I'll come back to you. Sir, <coughs> Sir this is Mukesh Kaushik from Danik Bhaskar. This way, center. Foreign Secretary, Sir, uh, for the first time, uh, China is, Chinese President is not taking part in G20. Have they provided any reason for his uh, skipping this summit? And do you think that his absence is playing a spoiler, as Jack Sullivan put it? Yeah, a question there. Yeah, please. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Microphone's not working. Yeah. Pranjun Sharma, India correspondent for RT Russia today. My question's for Mr. Kant. How would you say the response rather negotiations are going for the inclusion of African Union into the bloc? Also, how do you think... We'll limit ourselves to one question. Sorry, just don't have time. Yeah, Saurabh. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Saurabh Shukla. I'm editor-in-chief of News Mobile. Uh, you, this G20 presidency is also about India's solutions for the biggest challenges that the world faces. Uh, faces today. What are the three big uh, takeaways that you expect from the leaders' summit? Uh, <laughs> uh, more specific the... questions. For... <laughs> anyway, um, behind that, yeah. Go ahead. Behind you, yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So this is Pranay Upadhyay from Z News, and my question is to uh, uh, Sherpa Amitabh Kanji. Sir, India has been long pushing for the MDBs, like multilateral development bank reforms. And after the finance and the joint, uh, joint finance and uh, the Sherpa track meeting, what is the takeaway? Is there a consensus emerging for the multilateral development bank reform and how far we are to, uh, to onset the process after the Delhi summit? Okay, I'll take one more question here. Yeah, gentleman at the back. Yeah, please. Sir, I'm Madhurendra News Nation. Se bol no, you have the floor. Bad Bad Please sit down. Please sit down. You are the floor. You have the floor, but please sit down and ask the question while sitting down. Sir, my question is... Will you please sit down, sir? You are blocking the camera. Thank you. My question is Amitabh Kanji. I am Shrikant Bhatia. I am from Samwad Sindhi newspaper. Sir, the picture of the country in the country is... Do you have to do something for the picture of the country? Do you have to do something for the picture of the country? Do you have to do something for the picture of the country? Do you have to do something for the picture of the country? Who are you talking about leaders? Yes sir, leaders. I suck, okay. And I'll last question here. Somebody had the floor when I interrupted. Who had the floor? You had the floor. Go ahead. Hi sir, my name is Ashok Raj from ANI. I have a question regarding to this event. But my question addressed to Mr. Singla ji. That how do we coordinate such massive effort and what were the organization structure changes? I'll take this round of questions sir. Finance Secretary, sir, perhaps on, on the MDBs, sir, for instance, sir, you'd like to answer. Uh, why don't you answer now? Uh, some of you asked that what are the three key, key big takeaways from the summit. My request to all of you would be that please bear with us for another two days. Once the leaders consider the recommendations made by their ministers, governors, and give their decision. That would be the time to take a stock. That what have been the big takeaways as far as MDB reforms are concerned, both on strengthening multilateral development banks, 
as well as other institutions, strengthening them like IMF. There has been a very rich and intense discussion and we are highly hopeful that the discourse over the past nine months will get a positive consideration from the leaders. Thank you. So, maybe. Okay, thank you. Look, I have already uh, responded to the question on the presence or absence of certain leaders from the summit and I mentioned that External Affairs Minister of India has already responded to that question. Having said that, let me also mention it's a question of which frame of reference do you look at when you look at the uh, priorities, interest, concerns expressed in the G20, both of G20 countries as a collective, but also of those countries that are outside the G20, but their interest, concerns and priorities are impacted upon what decisions get taken in the proceedings of the G20. We are welcoming, as I mentioned, heads of 41 delegations, heads of states, heads of government, heads of international organizations in Delhi since 7th for the coming two days. And our focus is, as Sherpa said earlier, to drive a consensus on priorities of the G20, how to structure in the priorities and interests of the Global South into the G20 discussions and how to bring together the leaders of the G20 and the leaders of the invited guest countries around that particular agenda. That is the theme, that is the objective that we are focused on and we are very happy that by and large uh, there is a strong effort by all the countries, all the delegations uh, present to move towards a consensus. With regard to the African Union, uh, Sherpa sir has already said that Honorable Prime Minister wrote a letter to all countries of the G20 proposing that African Union be included as a full member of the G20. We expect that the summit proceedings starting tomorrow morning would take a suitable decision on that. Shrikanji, jo aapka prashan tha videshi chavi ka, G20 summit ka jo program hai, wo keval dilli takhi seemit tha fila. Shrikla sir, if you have on that question about organization. Yeah, I think Raj ji had asked this question about, uh, you know, G20 being involving a massive effort and the organizational aspects question? behind it. And I did, uh, in my opening remarks, uh, say that it was not only a whole of government effort, but a whole of nation effort because it is not only a huge exercise, but it is also an unprecedented exercise. We have never been president of the G20 before. This is also one of the most significant events we have organized, international events we have ever organized. And uh, I think every Indian citizen in a certain sense is a stakeholder in this exercise because the pride he feels of India hosting an event of this scale and magnitude with such level of success. So uh, it, it certainly has been, uh, you know, uh, an organizational effort that has gone across the country. But one aspect I think I'll just uh, flag an additionality which I want to put across is that it has involved also an equal, in, uh, let's say, collaboration, cooperation with every state and union territory in our country because we have taken it down to the grassroots levels and every state has seen this as an opportunity to promote the state's, uh, you know, tourism potential, uh, its own, recount its own de developmental achievements, utilize the platform to highlight uh, what every state in its own uh, case has done. So from that aspect, as I said, it's a very fine example of uh, cooperative federalism and uh, it has involved a, a level of cooperation that has gone from the central government to the states, to the municipalities, to the districts and down to the grassroots levels. So I think if you have Look at the success of this presidency. It is guided at the highest levels, but it has also involved every citizen of our country. Uh, Sherpa, sir, if you have anything to add on that question. From no, I think Saurabh asked that question about uh, uh, the three key, key, 
key takeaways or what? Well, uh, let me tell you that uh, India has tried to build a huge India narrative uh, to the G20. Uh, you will see this in uh, the New Delhi leaders' declaration, whether India has been the voice of the global south, whether India has been the spokesperson of the developing countries, whether we've... Uh, brought in the huge amount of technological development that India has done through the digital public infrastructure. But I would uh, suggest that it's not just three, but there are enormous number of uh, lessons which uh, come out of it. But you will have to wait uh, for the leader's declaration to emerge. And uh, you will then realize that, it's, uh, uh, that India will leave a huge imprint. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm. We can't accommodate everybody. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. The Wall Street Microphone, Shanti please. Lahiri from the Wall Closer, Street please. Journal. Yeah. Uh, hi. My question is about, um, so in addition to China and Russia's leadership uh, not being here, we've also seen them coordinating at other forums, uh, you know, be that BRICS uh, or elsewhere, that India is also part of. Um, you know, do we see that there is a bifurcation, China, Russia on the one side coordinating more? Um, and does that mean that the space for broad-based multilateral cooperation is shrinking? Neeraj, at the back. Sir, Neeraj, who news it in India, say, Hamara Sawal Amitabh Sir or Vinay Sir say. Hai. Sawal ye hai ki pichli baar Videsh Mantriyo ke G20 baithak ke baad ye bayan aya tha Videsh Mantri ki taraf se ki hum log safal nahi ho paaye ki Ukraine ke masle pe sahmati bane aur unka ishara Rus aur Chin ki taraf se tha kyunki unhone apna paksh badla tha Bali declaration ke baad Sawal ye hai ki dono desho ke rashtra pramukho ki gair maujoodgi mein kya Bharat success kar paaya hai ki Ukraine ke masle pe sahmati बना पाया है या नहीं या यूक्रेन को हटा दिया गया है ज्वाइंट कॉम्युनिक से श्रीधर यह गुड आफ्टरनून सर दिस श्रीधर फ्रॉम द एशियन एज सर यू मेंशन दैट द न्यू दिल्ली डेक्लेरेशन इज ऑलमोस्ट रेडी uh are we to uh, assume that the consensus has been issue, uh, achieved on all issues and will there be a separate uh, chair summary uh, which will be issued uh, at the end of the summit along with the joint communique Will there be a separate chair summary? Thank you. Um, Vishnu. Yeah. Good afternoon. Vishnu Shom from NDTV. There's a World Bank report which has come out uh, which has praised India's digital public infrastructure. I'm just trying to understand how is India going to disseminate this infrastructure? Will it be through an organization or an institution like the Solar Alliance? Okay. There's a lady in the back hand up there. I saw a long time ago. Yeah, that, you are the lady, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Xenia, um, RT.com. Uh, a question is, since we discussed uh, the global growth, um, has the issue of uh, developed countries imposing unilateral sanctions uh, been discussed or their responsibility for imposing uh, such sanctions which affects uh, you know, the global growth and especially the um, de uh, undeveloped um, countries. Has this been discussed as well? And will this figure in the communique probably? Question here. Yeah, you. A reporter for Shanghai Media Group. So, um, Close the microphone. Reporter from Shanghai Media Group. Uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, all participants show common interest in Global South, but I do believe there are different concerns between the Global South and the developed countries. So how India presidency will show its decisiveness in this? Thank you. Last question right at the back. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Correct. Sir, so this is Risha from Times Now. So uh, just last week, the Russian ambassador said that Indian uh, negotiating team was under immense pressure and there were uh, teams that were trying to hijack the whole negotiation. If you can shed some uh, light on that, how difficult it was during the negotiating time uh, to come to a, a joint declaration, if that is possible, a day after. I think, Rishav, uh, that answer, question is answered. Anyway, sir, I'll pass on this question. Sir, may I start with the Foreign Secretary, sir? You had some... Okay. I think to the first question, which is sort of more of an interpretative frame of what is happening to the multilateralism and the related space globally. I think we would rather focus on what are the priorities 
in the G20, of the G20 countries, and in that, what is the priorities that India stands for and the rest of the Global South stands for. And I think the space that we come from is, our belief is that uh, multilateralism needs to be reinvigorated, it needs to be inclusive, uh, and it also needs to be an important center and a medium for global governance, which has to be more representative, naturally effective, transparent, and accountable. Uh, we have brought up these points strongly in the discussions in various meetings of the G20, including in particular the G20 foreign ministers meeting, uh, and we will see how that finds reflection in the communique that's being negotiated. Neeraj, what was your question? Look, I just want to say that the government of Bharat प्रधान मंत्री मोदी की अध्यक्षता में यही अपेक्षा है कि G20 के सभी सदस्य देश मिलकर एक कंसेंसस की तरफ अग्रसर होंगे, अग्रसर हैं और G20 की समिट की समाप्ति के अपरांत हम ये अपेक्षा रखते हैं, विलाशा रखते हैं कि एक कंसेंसस के माध्यम के द्वारा कम्युनिके की जो है आउटकम होगा। to the question on the uh, DPI thing, I think we would ask uh, uh, Shetpa sir to, uh, to come and sort of uh, uh, talk about that. So, well, let me say that uh, uh, when we started uh, India's presidency, very few people knew about uh, digital public infrastructure and uh, the open source model of it. This has been extensively taken forward by both the finance track and the Sherpa track in a very vigorous manner. And today's India's uh, digital public infrastructure has been broadly accepted that this is the way to bring in financial inclusion, this is the way to do fast payments, this is the way to drive tech innovation of the future. And I think one of our great achievements one, somebody had asked about key takeaways. One of the, while we are not talking at this stage about achievements, but I think one of the key takeaways of India's presidency is that the world acknowledges that India has truly revolutionized technology through the digital public infrastructure, which uh, is a unique model. So its definition, its framework, its uh, how we take it forward will all, all of this has come. Uh, into discussion during India's G20 presidency. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you. So, the couple just, of other questions. Yeah. So, just two, I think one on Vishnu's question about uh, how would the digital public infrastructure uh, get expanded, uh, uh, develop strong externalities outside India and also, of course, within India. I think that is something which remains a very strong robust and an ongoing effort uh, of the entire uh, government of India and various departments. Uh, there are multiple lines of effort to ensure that DPI not only uh, expands and spreads across various uh, economic ecosystems within India, but also develops a huge value proposition for governance, for transparency, for financial inclusion internationally. And as I said, there are several strands and lines of effort which are underway. I think there was a question with regard to, you know, the differences of priorities of uh, Global South and the industrial economies. Yes, that is a fact that industrial economies come from a very vastly different uh, economic base, uh, social base, and the Global South comes from a different economic base. But this is not to say that the priorities, interests, and, global, and the concerns of the Global South are not relevant in the context of the G20. I think, if anything, they are perhaps central to the, uh, to the effectiveness, the functioning, and the successful outcome of the G20 modalities. So yes, you know, those are different perspectives of the two respective, I would say, segments of economy, but they both have a very important interface 
when it comes to the deliberations of the G20. And as I said early on, uh, India and Prime Minister Modi himself have been in the forefront uh, uh, about speaking on the priorities of the Global South. More importantly, why and how those priorities could be structured in to the agenda and the discussions uh, of the G20. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. 